What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Integrated Entrepreneur Podcast. Me, myself, and I, and my infamous battle buddy, Jonathan Federa. What's up, bro? What's happening? Just another, what's today? Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday? I don't even know what day it is anymore this week. I never know what day it is. because It doesn't, doesn't matter. Mess. It doesn't. Yeah, it just, just doesn't matter. Just show up and work again tomorrow and do it all over again. Dude, so let's talk about it. Today we got our ass kicked. Surprise, surprise. I feel like I say that every time we uh, get on a podcast. But the reality is every day in business is somewhat of an ass whipping. And what I want to talk about today is kind of stacking momentum after the ass beating has stopped, right? Or after the pain point or bottleneck is, is past the storm, if you will. Yeah. And what tools and techniques are available to us to kind of help us get through that cycle, right? And um, as you know, living in Florida, every 3 p.m. every summer day, it rains, yep. right? And then by 325, it's fucking sunshine and hell because mm -hmm. uh, it's 9 million degrees outside. But it's a, it's a perfect example of a short lived period of time in our day in business followed by what I typically see as like really good shit. Yeah. Right. So stacking momentum after loss is kind of one of those things that I think takes some time uh, to get used to. Right. Cause the, most oftentimes we just want to stay Debbie Downer and woe is me. Right. But being in business for 165 years each, you and I have, have had the privilege to hit that button several times and kind of get get out of it. And kind of we know what it is when we're in it. Right. Yes. For those people who don't have that privilege, talk me through your mental shift and what you do on a daily basis to get through those moments. Yeah, I can easily do that. So here's the reality. You're going to have lot of losses and you have to get used to it. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. What I do, I analyze why it happened real quick. I don't dwell on it or I try not to dwell on it. I'd be lying if I said I always am able to block it out because sometimes it just will stick with you a little bit longer. It takes a little bit more work. But once I understand why it happened, I want to learn that lesson and I want to go back right into winning. What does winning look like? And it's getting the little things done and stacking little small wins. And it's not always, these wins do not always show progress right away. Okay, I'll give you an example. New sales rep starting out. The biggest thing he has going in his mind is his mindset. He's got to get wins where you want to get him wins quick so he builds confidence. He might be doing 200 calls a day. And... That's learning and prospecting. Is if he's making the if he's doing the actions, it's a win. Now there's invisible progress because he's learning. If he has a loss and he does not do those two hundred calls or two hundred actionable things the following day, well then that's a problem. Why? Because he's not getting back up on the horse. Okay. So what I do is I try to break it down into the smallest things possible. Do what I know I need to do to win after I analyze it. So it's taking the necessary actions, doing and, and getting my pipeline back filled, and then working to help those people through it. Is it always smooth? Almost never. However, and I'm just relating this to sales because I have a, a sales background. I'm looking for the people that are doing the actions regardless of the result and trying to get better. Those are the ones that over the course of time are going to be your top performers. The guys that are get scared, get shaken, or stop doing the actions that will drive success, those are the people that are not going to make it, right? And so that's one of the key things that I look for. It's, it's not all the steps I take, but that is the major one. Right. How do you see it? Man, I just kind of revert back to what the fuck I was feeling. And when I got started in kind of the financial planning world back in 2015, 
Dude, Sunday afternoon, I was sick to my stomach knowing I had to come back into fucking work and call 50 people, 100 people, whatever the number was, right? Yeah. But being that that was the season of pain, kind of looking back at it, it was just a, it was, it's a good representation of just not giving up. And to your point, it may take five days of you striking out and having that invisible progress of just doing the activity and getting the reps in to then come back in that following Monday and maybe you make the first six sales that you call, right? Or whatever the case is, whatever your your accolade is that you're going after. But kind of thinking back on that, it's more of like, get out of your own way, right? Get over the emotional, oh shit, I'm going to have to call people that don't want to talk to me or that I feel don't want to talk to me, which is kind of, the reality behind that is we put that that title on it for them. We don't know if that's the case. But then I also remember vividly when someone did say yes and the like the dopamine rush of that. Yeah. yeah. And so when we look back, we're at what, 10 years now, basically, of like being in the space of sales in this particular industry. Now because I've stacked 10 years of doing the deal, mm -hmm. I don't have a, I don't have to make calls anymore because I've been in the game long enough. Right. I've got a big enough network and I get good referrals, but that shit would have never happened if I quit back then. Of course. Right. So to your point, it's like when we're hiring on people now, it's not even about getting them like a sale. It's just congratulating them on showing the fuck up and doing the activity period. Mm -hmm. And building things that can get them motivated to come back the next day to do it again, regardless of the yeses and nos and, and did you sell or, or not. And I think if young business owners and, and shit, dude, there's even people who have been in business long, you know, 10 years themselves who battle with that still daily. Yeah. But I think if people can understand that it's not about the massive home run, it's singles and doubles. You know, and if you can, if you can lay down a good bunt and get on base every now and then you were bound to score. Right. And so I think when you unpack it, creating the momentum is just a mental mind shift of, I don't care what the, what the results of the day are, as long as I know that I did the activity to get me closer to that. Yes. And not giving up because, because your point, if you give up, then you're, Welcome to Moe's or, you know, wherever you're working, you're going back to work for someone else or whatever the case is. Right. Um, and in sales, it's, it's fucking hard, bro. It's not fucking normal. Yeah. I mean, I've known some people who are like, they eat it up and they love it. They love dialing 200 times. They're freaks. Right. And they're just, they're special. But for 99% of us, it is a not normal activity. No. And it's, uh, like I said, dude, I remember sitting on the couch on Sundays looking at my wife being like, fuck that place. I don't want to go back tomorrow because I know what dreadful phone calls, but it's all mental bullshit that you put in there. Yes. You know, You're so I, I think just, you know, to your point, if you can just maintain the steady, just do the activity and don't worry about the rest of it, it'll, it'll happen. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about sales, but let's talk about business or personal goals. You're striving and doing everything you can to get get that goal accomplished. And if you find out that, hey, the way you're currently doing it is not going to achieve that goal, you have two options. Find a way to make the goal happen and go down a different path or quit. And the reality is you're figuring out ways that it doesn't work until you find out the path that does. If you're taking all those actions, like if my goal is to double my business and I think I'm going to double my business by doubling my staff, well, guess what? If I don't factor in that I also have to double the amount of marketing spend and lead generation, well, I have all the staff and I'm still doing probably just in a slightly elevated numbers. And until I dissect it, hey, the problem is these guys, my team does not have enough people to call. Well, then I have to go solve for that new problem. And once I solve for that problem, my goal will happen. So do you give up, do you fire everybody? Or do you say, hey, 
what is the missing ingredient here, figure that out, and then take care of that. And this works yeah. the personal life, business, doesn't make a difference, but you have to be able to take a step back and think outside the box and find the solution. So many people get focused on the problem, so many get focused on the mistake, and they just dwell on it. A good way to reset everything that you're doing is after you analyze it, go to the gym, go work out, get it out of your mind. The sooner that's out of your mind and you're not focused on the problem, you can start looking for the solution and that's where the magic is. Yeah, dude, I think a lot of people too, man, they over fucking look what you mentioned there. Doing it wrong is a step in the right direction because yeah. you're proving that the shit doesn't fucking work so you won't do it again. There you go. Right? But... Yeah. If you, if you want to go by the definition of insanity and you're not smart enough or you don't take the time to realize that the way I'm doing it doesn't work and I'm just going to keep on, keep on, keep on, keep it on, yep. like you're going to burn out and you're going to exit stage left. Yeah. I've always been good at understanding quickly the momentum that I'm trying to get isn't happening in this activity. What do I need to change? Yeah. And I notate in diary, if you will. Self-aware, be honest. Tried to get 16 new prospects by this way. Didn't work. Okay, tried it this way. Didn't work. Tried it this way. Worked a little better. And then I build upon it once it starts, the pendulum starts to swing, and you build on it a little bit. The other component, which you just said, which is a good fucking idea for those of you who just get pissed off and keep going, but everything breaks because you're so aggravated that you're, you don't give a shit what you're doing. So it gets worse, right? And you multiply the anger and you multiply the shit not working by a hundred is to walk the fuck away and go do something different for an hour, two hours. I can even tell you there was days back early business where I would leave at 10 a.m. and say, fuck this day. I'm coming back tomorrow refreshed. Mm -hmm. And I would go home and check out and not think about work the whole day because the alternative was, I could sit there and be pissed off and stew in it all day and really wreak havoc on all the progress that I did make. Yes. And it is okay for you to check out. It is okay for you to go home. It is okay for you to go find something you enjoy doing to get your mind off of the anger and the shittiness of the situation. As long as you show back up tomorrow refreshed and you allow yourself that and then you don't bring it back to you the next day, right, to work. And, uh, and, and that was really good. It took me a while to figure that out, right? Younger me was like fist through wall, fist through, you know, refrigerator door, all of those things, right? When it was just full of testosterone and shit yeah. to realize, like, I don't have to fucking be here. So let me go find something I enjoy doing and get my mind off the shit. And what I usually found was the answers typically came to me when I got up and walked away proactively. Mm -hmm. let, and let me give, let me make this a little bit more clear. If you are someone that is self-aware and you should be that you will stew on this, removing yourself immediately and doing something else is the best thing. You can do. I'll give a clear example. Anybody that's selling, selling, all you're doing is it's a transfer of emotion. So if you're coming from a negative place, let's say you had an awful call, you had a large deal, and for whatever reason, you tried, you thought it was coming, and it did not work out. And that pissed you off so bad that you are no longer in control of your state. If you continue to take calls that day, that negative energy will rub off on every client. And all you're doing is making the damage worse. And now let's say you're four calls in to destroying client list and you have a problem come up with one of your team members and they come in and they bring it to you and you lose your fucking shit well guess what now not only did you really hurt your productivity your personal productivity but you're hurting your team yep. okay and so if this is you get the fuck out of the office go do something you enjoy like you said and think about what is the takeaway and then get right back to it and here's another thing. There's a lot of people that need wins, and everybody needs wins. But 
Right? They need to see it to build momentum and to build that confidence. So if whatever your goal is, break it down into the smallest possible steps you can, almost to a daily basis, and check those boxes. And then guess what? You're building small little wins. And as you're checking those boxes, you're regaining your confidence. As you're regaining your confidence, you sound better, you look better, you're performing better. And then you continue to check those boxes. And then maybe those boxes get a little bigger. Those tasks are a little bit harder. Okay? Yes, I know you front loaded the, the next three days with easy shit. But once you get through that and you pass that test and now you're confident, start approaching some of those harder things. Another thing is understanding what time of day you operate the best. Okay? And if you well, that's a good have, one. Yeah, if you could have those hard tasks fall within your time, if you're a morning person, great. Afternoon, great. Evening or night, focus on those hard tasks when you know you're the most productive. And sometimes I know right off the bat that if I'm if there's a big task that I have to do and I need to focus on it 100%, there's very little chance of me being able to focus if I am in my office. So what do I do? I either come into the office super early when no one's here, I stay super late, or I'll come in on, on the weekend when I know no one should be here. There's people here, but when I know when I think no one's going to be here, I close my office door and get after it. All right? It comes down to knowing yourself, knowing what and how you perform, and optimizing it for that. And what I would tell you is make sure – that you are making the steps simple and clear for yourself. And make sure you get to check those boxes. And as you're checking those boxes and the confidence builds, things will go back to normal. What are some of the other things you do, Keith, that you might not have brought up? Um, now it's completely different, right? Because I'm running teams and, and employees. But, you know, my focus, you know, outside of work, you know, there's things – as far as like family, right? Now you have wife and kids and things like that. And you and I have had great conversations in the past couple of months where our kids have done some really amazing things and uh, very challenging times, right? And the, the same thing holds true with like, dude, the relationship with your spouse and your kids. Yeah. Having the ability to bite your tongue and walk away and diffuse before just flying off the handle or saying some shit you don't mean, or I made a post today on social media, being careful of what you're labeling and how you're using your words to label certain things. The same concept applies in business and sales and running a team and leadership and kids and wife, right? Is just knowing how to pause and breathe, analyze before you just react, right? And, and a lot of that comes with, with, life experience and age. Uh, so for you young bucks out there, keep flying off the handle. It's all good. You'll, you'll get it one day. It'll show up. Uh, but if you can do it a little sooner than I did, you might be way more successful uh, because I, I, I was late to that party. Uh, I was very late. Yeah. And so, you know, I think for me is, is now it's just become a routine of like, all right, two sleeps and then react, you know, like if I'm gonna if I'm pissed off, I'm gonna tell myself, all right, I'm gonna sleep on this for a couple of days, and if I'm still that fucking pissed off, then I give myself permission to, to go out and just say what I need to say, yep. professionally, right? But I think a lot of people don't have that filter of that time, if you will. So for me, it's like, all right, what are we doing as a unit? Am I leading my team the right way? someone does something really fucking stupid, which typically happens, you know, once or twice a week because they're in a rush or whatever, not intentionally, how, how I react to that is going to set the tone for how they grow within our business. Yeah. Right. Cause you're one comment away from ruining some shit for somebody. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and losing respect and all that good stuff. So for me is all about implementing, you know, I can't just leave now. Right. I, I mean, I can, but it's not as easy as it was when I was the only responsible for me. Uh, so now it's like, all right, I, I need to be able to instead of leave, I got to buy myself 48 hours of process time. Right. And I let them know, hey, don't come talk to me about that until Wednesday. 
you know, if it happens on Monday. Like, let's let's have this conversation Wednesday when we're both chill and we can actually be constructive instead of destructive. Yeah. Right. So that's that's the big thing that I've learned is being, you know, in the leadership realm. And leadership to me is pretty new, right, within the past couple of years. And is it worse? It's a bitch, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, the best oh books my I've God. Ever read, best books are the two from uh, Yako Willick. By far, hands down. Great. Dichotomy is the leadership. And uh, I forget the name of his first book, but it's easily searchable in your search, search engine. But you mentioned something that, key that I think is a key that most people are not aware of. Okay. I will say that one of my superpowers is my wife. Here's why. She keeps me grounded. There's no stress, no drama. And uh, she can kind of read how how the day went and responds accordingly. And so there's things that will derail your goals and your missions. And keeping them in check and paying attention to them is massive. If you are fat and unhealthy, okay, I don't care what the new trend is here. It's not fucking cool. And I know I'm not fat shaming anybody, but it's the fucking truth. If you're not healthy, your health issues are going to derail your goals. Okay. Sorry. I'm actually not sorry. It's the truth. Um, I'd sugarcoat it, but they'd probably eat it. So one, your health, your physical fitness. If that is not sharp and on point, it can derail you. Your family life. If you are somebody who is not being there for your family, okay, or there's trouble at home, I have seen more people derailed by that than almost anything else, okay? If you don't have faith in yourself and don't have pray, or I'll tell you what, I started praying about a year ago, every morning. It's helped me tremendously, okay? Yes, I believe in God 100%. I'm not here to push any any beliefs on anybody else. I'm telling you what works for works for me. And so making sure my faith, family, finances, fitness is all in line allows me to attack business and attack my goals in ways that most other people could not even believe. I am so singularly focused on shit and I don't stop until it's there. Like Today, I did something that was, I, everything was trying to derail it. I still got it done. Why? Because I can put everything else on hold because everything else is good. And I could just say, hey, I got to take care of this. Give me like a three-hour, four-hour time block. And I took care of it. And mission accomplished. Some people can't do that. And right. what happens is if you're neglecting any of those areas, that eventually will catch up to you and make it next to impossible. Dude, two times this week, clients of mine, relatively great shape. Outside appearance, you would think they're beasts in the gym. Mm -hmm. Family life is on point. Heart attacks. Both guys. Under 42 years old. And to your point, like, motherfucking stress will kill you. And, and I had one of their wives call crying because this episode happened on Friday before think, or, uh, Easter. They didn't go to the hospital. They defi- you know, just told the paramedics, like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going home. Paramedics were like, you're an idiot, uh, but do what you want and sign here, release liability. And she called and she's flipping out and I called him it was like had that big brother, little brother call. And I was like, where the fuck are you at? And why aren't you at the doctor? And, and he actually was at the doctor when I called him. Moral of the story. If you guys aren't processing and getting the stress and dealing with it in ways that aren't even more destructive, i.e. alcohol and cocaine and shit, it doesn't fucking matter what size business you build. You ain't spending that goddamn money from the grave. Yeah. Right? And that's a problem. A lot of people don't understand, and we've heard it. How many times you hear this week? Oh, man, I'm doing all of this shit now. I'm working 15 hours a day now so that in two years I can spend all this extra time with the family. Yeah. 
I'm a firm believer in that. But you can't just go eat dog shit and, and glizzies at the gas station full of bullshit and grab and goes from everywhere else and not handle your shit. Right. And so it is, you're accurate. You're 100% right. If you're, if your mental health and physical health isn't being taken care of, you're a death warrant. Just is what it is. Yeah. It's a matter of time. So those are two components that if you look at, I don't know, Joe Rogan, you look at fucking Andy Frisella, you look at all these guys, right? Andy's a great example. Dude went from being a fat slob to ripped at 250 with a six pack. Yeah. Back to a fat slob, back to being skinny, right? Or, or he ain't skinny. He's a big motherfucker, right? <laughs> but nice. everyone will tell you, like, how do you feel when you're fat and shitty, right? You don't want to wake up. You don't get dressed. You don't fucking feel like shit. You look like shit. You act like shit. Yeah. Dress well, feel well, right? Dress good, look good, feel good. That is 100% accurate and will correlate to the success that you see in business, leadership, family, spouse, parent, whatever you want to put in there. So I'm a firm believer in that. And I've been a fat ass, stressed out motherfucker. And that shit sucks. And I got a picture that my wife pulls up every now and then. And she's like, look at how fucking disgusting you were. As a reminder of like, don't lose your shit. Keep your eye on the prize, right? And so, you know, that, that's one thing, like, dude, if you don't do anything else, get your ass to the gym, walk around, do something. Yeah. It will make you a better production person at work. And I don't care what you're producing. If it's sales, leadership, just whatever, you will get better. Firm believer in that. I, I think and that's I mean, creating yeah. momentum. Yeah. You're right. Right. Creative. And, and a lot of people are like, oh, I don't fucking, uh, we did an episode recently where like, don't change too much shit. If you're a fat slob now and you're lazy and you don't go to the gym, don't do a diet and the gym and this and that. Just go walk on a treadmill for 10 minutes a day. Yeah. Drink a gallon of water a day. I don't know. Just one thing and own it. A hundred percent. I do want to tell you a little bit of a story because I, for the longest time, I believe this. If I work hard enough for, for a stretch of time, then I could just stop and enjoy my time. And I'm gonna tell yeah, you, good luck with that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, that whole thing is bullshit. And here's why it's bullshit. As you're doing it, as you're, if you're really true and being successful, that goalpost, you never catch it. You never Dude, it always it. moves. That end zone is always moving. And so what I would have thought four years ago is success. I have fucking surpassed by leaps and bounds. And if you ask me today, if I truly feel like I'm successful, I will say I'm blessed. I, say, I would say I'm in a good position. I am not anywhere where the fuck I want to be. And no. you know what? In five years, you could ask me that question again. And I guarantee I would be praying today for the life I would have in five fucking years. But at that point in time, I'm going to tell you the exact same thing. Okay. And I think it's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because it drives you to a, a level and to a point where other people will never see. But it is a curse because it will fucking haunt you all the time, stress you the fuck out, but it will make it so that you actually do what the fuck you say you're going to do. Okay. Yep. And there are. But Matthew McConaughey said it best, didn't he? His, in his speech, he was like, Who are you chasing? The future me. Yeah. And I hope I never catch him. And I hope I never catch him, right? Yeah. And I think there's two ways to look at that, though. You can use that for great fuel, or you can use that as self-sabotage. And it's up to the user to figure out how they're going to use it. Yes, I'm just like you. I'm blessed today. I sold the Ferrari today, oh, right? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, thanks. Took a while, but got it done. If you ask me... Like I am leaps and bounds where I was as a police officer, making thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven thousand dollars a year. Yep. I'm also not even fucking close to being happy of where I'm at. <laughs> and people are like, dude, what the fuck, bro? Like, what else do you want? And it's not yeah. about want. 
Now it's about how far can I push my limits? Yeah. I'm talking in business. I signed up to do a hundred mile race in December. Now we're talking about physical pain and, and like pushing the body. Now it's about deciding what I want to go challenge myself to do for my amusement and fun, just to see if I can do it. Yeah. Right. So business now isn't a matter of like, I need to make more money. Now I'm trying to say, how many people underneath me in my business can I make millionaires? How many people around me can I pull up to that status? How much can I put my body through before I fucking snap in half? Like That's what we're chasing. It's a different euphoric high. It's a different goal. But to your point, that goal, in December when I finish this 100 miles, I'm not going to just stop. I'm going to now, what what other big shit can I go do that's even more retarded than a hundred mile race? Right. And people tell me all the time, like, dude, why would you do that? That's stupid. You're right. But when I finish it, I get to get the dopamine rush. I get to do those things and then set another goal to push me even further. And it's the same thing in business relationships and all that. It doesn't matter what it is. Set a goal, find it, target but you can't stop there because if you've ever driven on a highway and you let your foot off the gas, you stop. Yeah. You don't go faster. No. Doesn't work that way. Physics is weird. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thing called friction. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this real quick. And if you bring up the hundred mile race, there's no reason to do that. That's probably the dumbest shit ever, but I totally understand why you want to do it. And I kind of want to do it too. So I'll send you the link. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do it that bad. Because um, I'm in the middle of one right now, and my level of compete is actually hurting. So I signed up to do 100,000 push-ups in a year. Do the math, it's 274 a day. So I'm, I'm like, fuck it, I'm just going to do 300 a day. They had a leaderboard, and man, I wish they didn't have that leaderboard. Okay, I think I spotted the people that were in front. 5,000 push-ups, 10,000 push-ups, because they automatically start off as a race. I didn't realize that. But I did realize there's a mathematical way for me to catch and surpass them, which I've done. But now, the person that put it together who owns a gym, Mark Zolomov, you know, he's great. Me and him are going back and forth on this leaderboard to see who can finish the 100,000 push-ups first. And when I tell you it's gotten ridiculous, I did 2,500 push-ups uh, yesterday. I am on 1,600 today. And I'm going to do 25 because I just want to kill any hope that he has of competing any further. And I know it might not work, okay, because he competes like I compete. And the reason I'm bringing this up is if you are struggling to create momentum and you are somebody that is super competitive, figure out how you can either compete with yourself or somebody else that's going to hold you accountable. And I promise you the, and by the way, guys, this push-up competition, I get nothing for winning. Uh, it's just bragging. Rights. Bragging rights are everything, bro. They, they fucking are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just want to be yeah. Okay. So think about how you can use that yourself or think about how you can use that to motivate your team. The possibilities are endless when you have that mindset. Adapt that mindset. Have your team adapt that mindset. And then when you are in these lost periods, find a way to make it a competition and see what happens. When we're doing sales trainings for our clients, we tell them all the time, like if you own a sales company, mm -hmm. put the leaderboard up and display it. Yeah. It will inorganically move people up the leaderboard or move them out of your company. Without you having to fire them, right? Which are typically people who should have been fired anyway, right? Yeah. But what it will do is it will move that first, second, and third tier of competition people, the people that like to compete, the numbers are going to go up. And you'd be surprised at how many sales companies don't post numbers like that. Yeah. And then when they do post numbers, it's like, holy fuck, dude, we did 30% more revenue this quarter. I'm like. And you didn't have to change anything, but put some paper on a, on the damn kitchen, you know, on, on the refrigerator in the break room. Yep. But to your point, like, I'm just like you. I'm wired. But motherfucker, you ain't going to be in first place long. 
that's the goal. I'm going to beat your ass today. Like that's the mentality that I carry. And I think a lot of alpha, you know, people are the same way. Yeah. But you have to create the momentum to get there. And then you have to harness it in a positive light. Because you can be that shit talker too and get skunked. And then it just throw you into a tailspin, right? Yes. So I think just creating the momentum, going back to basic steps, not having to worry about the grand slam walk off in the bottom of the ninth. Just worry about getting on base. If you worry about getting on base every inning, you're going to run the scoreboard up. So find whatever those momentum pieces are, put them on paper and check that box every day. Don't worry about winning – and selling shit, just worry about winning the day based on what your activity is that would put you in the best position to make that sale, meet that person, whatever, 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 right? Whatever the thing is. That's my that's my theory around kind of building momentum in small digestible bites to then over time see huge, huge gains. Dude, I love it. Well, guys, you heard it here. Do us a favor, leave us a review, share this with someone that needs to hear it. And if you guys want us to bring up any topics that you're struggling with, please reach out to me, reach out to Keith. We are both open and we want to serve and help you guys. Appreciate you guys and we'll catch you on the next one.